stay tuned to the end of the video to figure out how you can enter to win the Vizsla combo from Kyberlite. My friends, my friends, this is a new series that I have been preparing for a while now, and I'm really excited to share it with you all. So what is this series and what are you in for? This will be an exegetical look at the teachings of Kreia, as well as looking into who she is and everything we can puzzle out regarding her philosophy and motives. And you may be asking yourself, okay, but what does that mean? So exegetical is the adverb for exegesis. And there are two main ways to exposit a source material, exegesis and eisegesis. Eisegesis is where you come into a source material with a hypothesis in mind and scour it to find evidence that supports that hypothesis. This would be your basic theory video or post like Darth Jar Jar. The prefix for the word is ice, meaning into. So you are putting your idea into the source material. Exegesis is sort of the opposite, but not quite. You come at the text and break down only what is explicitly said in that text. The root here word is ex or exe, meaning out of. Basically, the only ideas you should come away with when you're done is that which can be directly taken out of that source material. Here, we're going to be doing the latter, taking an exegetical look at the teachings of Kreia. Now, I know I'm not the first one to break down Kreia and her beliefs and her motives, and I certainly won't be the last, but with Kreia, she is just so complex that I think there is always going to be more that can be said, and I hope to provide something really unique here. Today, we're going to start with Kreia's presence on Paragus. As an added note, I will be usually referring to the player character as a she, because the identity of the exile was canonically that of Mitra Surik, but just just ignore the fact that most of my footage is played from the perspective of the male exile. That's not canon. Don't worry about it. Anyway, many of you may know that April is testicular cancer month. Now, I am not a doctor, but I am wearing a lab coat, and that should mean something, even if it doesn't. Now, last month, I spoke to you guys about the awesome products over at Manscaped, and they have decided to extend my promo code to this month because they are partnering with the Testicular Cancer Society. And in solidarity, they will be offering the awesome and very comfortable Manscaped t-shirt in a limited edition purple in order to show your support and raise awareness for testicular cancer. Now, Manscaped can prevent testicular cancer. What? Now, Manscaped can't prevent testicular cancer, but what they do is provide you with a wide array of products that give you the opportunity to inspect the at-risk area. So that's there. Thank you again to Manscaped. Again, our promo code is LORE20, and you can get the awesome purple and very cozy shirt uh, in order to show your support for the Testicular Cancer Society, as well as get the awesome Perfect Package 3.0. Thank you guys, and now on to the video. I can't see in these. Awaken. The Exile's journey begins with Kreia. Her voice echoes in the Exile's mind, beckoning her to awaken. Kreia is the first character encountered by the Exile in KOTOR 2. After getting out of the Kulto tank at Paragus, you find your way into the morgue where you find this elderly lady. If you've gathered all the information available to you at this point, her presence in the morgue is the third time the game tries to tell you that she is dead. The first is during the prologue where T3 finds Kreia laying on the floor of the Ebon Hawk. The in-game text refers to Kreia as appearing to be dead. After that, we can use the same terminal that opens the morgue door to access the station's medical logs. The logs tell you that the Ebon Hawk only had one survivor, who they placed in the Kulto tanks. Based on the fact that the player wakes up in the Kulto tank, we can assume that the logs are talking about Mitra here. They also refer to an old woman with no life signs. This is obviously Kreia, as we find her here in the morgue. However, there's actually a fourth time that the game tries to tell you that she is dead. When you actually go into the morgue, she is labeled as a corpse, a title usually reserved for a body that was killed before the player character arrived. Clicking on her will not allow you to loot her, but simply give you the message, this old woman looks dead, but there's no sign of what killed her. There are two conclusions that we can draw from this information. I think the most immediate conclusion would be that Kreia was mortally wounded and used the Force to preserve a flicker of life within her. The other option is that Kreia used the Force to dampen her own life signs, 
faking her death so that she might manipulate events around her and control the perceptions of others regarding her. Given the fact that the corpse says there's no sign of what killed her, the evidence seems to suggest the latter. I'd love to speculate here, but we don't have enough information yet, so let's just stick to what we know for now. Now, if she was faking, this marks her as a master manipulator and someone who is not to be trusted. If not, this marks her as someone who is able to survive grave threats without falling. The takeaway in either case is that this character is supremely powerful in the Force, able to perform feats that would be considered rare by most Jedi. As we loot the second body in the morgue, Kreia rises up, pulling her hood low to cover her atrophied eyes. Find what you're looking for amongst the dead. Kreia rises from her sleep and begins to immediately scold you. Now, looting bodies is normally not a big deal in RPGs, even a game with an encompassing light side, dark side system like KOTOR. Looting will rarely net you dark side points. This is why it is usually jarring when a character in the game reacts in a way that you'd expect for someone to react in the real world. Already, we're seeing that Kreia is at war with what we call video game logic. What's even more interesting is that there is no way around this. Believe me, I have tried. The only way out of here is a door that you need to bash down with a plasma torch, a torch you can only acquire from this specific body in the morgue. We are not five minutes into the exile story and Kreia is already scolding you for something that was beyond your control. Throughout the game, it feels like nothing you can do will ever please Kreia that the options given to you by the game are all locking you into her disapproval. Yes, this is intentional, but it's also not true, or at least it won't remain true for long, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's actually talk about the nature of Kreia's reprimand. What she is doing is critiquing your use, the player's use, of video game logic. Can't find your way out of a room? Loot everything until you find a key. From a deeper standpoint, she is criticizing you, both the player and the exile, for relying on previous knowledge, using your past techniques and experiences as a crutch. All right, we are three pages in and we have just covered her first line. Um, uh, after that, you have the option to tell Kreia that you thought she was dead. Close to death. Yes, closer than I'd like. Taking her at her word would imply that she was not faking since she claims that she didn't want to be that close to death. But we already determined that slowing down her life signs with the Force would mark her as a manipulator, which would make her untrustworthy. So this line alone doesn't sway us to a decision in either direction. She reveals to you that she can see you are a Jedi through your stance and the way you carry yourself, the way you walk. Despite the fact that Kreia is blind, she can see that you are a Jedi. This is all done to tell the player that Kreia is someone of great insight and perception. It subconsciously tells the player that this character is someone to whom you should listen. It's the archetype of the old wise sage, and Obsidian triggers our brain with shorthand to tell us that that's who we should think Kreia is. You can reveal to Kreia that you heard her voice when you were in the culto tank, something that she claims was unintentional, but also doesn't surprise her. If Kreia is to be believed, it seems that what you heard was Kreia actually trying to wake herself up, not Mitra. Kreia maintains a calm and commanding tone throughout the conversation as she tells you about the turmoil and loss of life that she sensed as she slept. She is cold, but not unkind. Her tone is what immediately sets her apart from other mentor characters in Star Wars, promising something that is unique and thrilling. I am Kreia. And I am your rescuer, as you are mine. And while I intended to go through the entire section of Paragus and everything Kreia says through it, but uh, I'm realizing as I'm recording this that this is getting a little bit too long, and I'm just now at about halfway through the script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into two parts, and I will be uploading the second part tomorrow. So we'll get part one today and part two tomorrow. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience, but uh, I want to thank you guys for being patient with me. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys like this series. If you want me to continue through, I am willing to break down every single line of Kreia through KOTOR in this series. If you want that, please let me know in the comments and I would love to continue this series. Don't forget, this is the second to last day that you can participate in the lightsaber giveaway for the Vizsla combo and Darkblade. All you have to do to enter is let me know in the comments what is your favorite duel that involves 
the Dark Saber. Tomorrow's video, part two of Paragus Kreas Conundrums, will be the last video that you can enter the contest. So stay tuned for that, and I'll be announcing the winner in early May. And then we're going to go right into our May the 4th giveaway. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, let me know in the comments what you think of this. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you did enjoy it, or if you absolutely hated it and do not want me to continue this series, you can feel free to leave a thumbs down completely guilt free because that tells me I'm not doing my job. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, may the Lord be with you, now and forever.